So if you're anything like me, then you've probably been living under a rock and you've never heard of the app called Motion Cam on Android. Well, boy oh boy, let me tell you, we're about to dive into the rabbit hole and we are gonna come out the other side completely enlightened. To set the stage here, this is the app that both Samsung and Google have used to shoot their shot on Google or Samsung kind of promotional videos as well. Basically, the quick and dirty of what this app allows you to do is shoot straight up raw video from your Android phone. So what that means is, let's say your device supports up to 30 FPS, that means you're getting 30, 30, I don't know which side, 30 raw DNGs per second out of your device. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to run you through the app real quick and I'm going to show you each of the different features that it has and then I plan on doing some videos later diving into each individual feature as well. So let's jump right in. So if you open the app here, I decided to pay for the free version because it is uber powerful and like I said, I'm going to be going way more in depth over this and why in some later videos on this app. But if we jump right in here, you can see we launch straight into a night mode here. And if we touch this little toggle right here, we can see each of the different modes that we get. So I'm going to give a quick explanation on what each one can do. So starting off with night mode here, I actually think it's one of the least powerful options here in the app. Basically, what it is supposed to do is just slightly change your shutter speeds in auto mode meaning that it will slightly increase your shutter speeds to let more light in as compared to the normal photo mode. Next, we have our actual photo mode here. And what this does is it's basically just like a normal photo mode in any other app. It gives you your controls over here. You've got your little EV here, so you can slide this up and down to assist in your auto right there. You've got your exposure, so you've got your shutter speed right here. You can change that. You can see I've also got some options on that give me some indications on screen whether I am crushing my shadows or blowing out my highlights. You've also got your ISO slider here and you can see that we are looking like absolutely linear on here. You can pick any value, not just the preset ones that uh, you are probably used to in your normal apps. You've also got focus right here and you can see I've uninstalled and reinstalled the app several times with updates. So I have some prompts here as well. Look at that, you can see we can slide right there and just change our focus on our own like so go back to auto same with our temperature here go super cool super warm or you can just go back to auto and leave it as is up next one of the cooler features here is the burst mode so if we jump into our burst mode here what this does is when you hit the shutter button that it has actually been recording a couple seconds before you hit that button so what it's going to do is it's going to give you all of the frames as if you were recording a raw video meaning that so for example here, you can see my nice dirty table. So I'm gonna wave around just like this, and then I'm gonna hit that photo right there for the burst option. And you can see what it just did was it gave all of these frames in between when we hit the shutter and a couple seconds beforehand. So there we go. Right there, it looks like one and a half seconds or so before. So now you've got all of these frames to choose from. So for example, if you are trying to catch a moment, if you click the shutter at right about the right time, you get all of the frames before that shutter click as well. Up next, what we have is our time-lapse mode here. This one's going to be a little bit self-explanatory. So we have the same settings on our side over here like we had before. The additional one that we have done here is we have this little time-lapse settings right here. So you can see, like I said, a little bit self-explanatory here. You have the time between capture and you have the total capture time. So you can come through. Let's say you want to capture for an hour set it to 60 right there, and the number of seconds between each frame, it being five seconds. So you can see you're gonna get 720 frames, and then it also gives you a little playback here. That would be about 24 seconds at 30 FPS for that one. All right, so up next are the two main stars of the show here, our raw video mode being exactly what it sounds like. Believe it or not, you can actually record a raw video out of your Android phone, getting the maximum use out of your sensors here. So. What we have here is the same kind of settings that we had on the side for photos, but this time now we have raw video. I was about to do quotes, not quotes, it is raw video. So I'm gonna go through a couple settings here. You have obviously, we're gonna jump to the top here. You have your lenses here on the side. So I can change to 16 here. I can also change to my 104 and back to 24. 
we have OIS options here. So with my device here, the Vivo X100 Pro, the OIS on the main lens is not currently supported, but we have tons of other options here that I'm not gonna go through in this video. I'll be sure to go more in depth when I make a dedicated video for that though. And just to show a quick demonstration here of what we're gonna do, I've got my little computer. I'll tell you what, I've got my little coffee here. I'm gonna set my coffee right here in frame. And what I'm gonna do is you can see it's a little bit shaky because I don't have OIS on this, which is one of the biggest fallbacks for me in my device currently at the moment. So I'm gonna hit this button right here and you can see all of these settings up here in the top. And you can see just how ridiculously large these file sizes are gonna be. You can see we've got our output FPS there, nice and stable, right around 30. In 13 seconds, there was about a gig and a half. So what are we now able to do with what we just captured? So if we come up here into this manage video section, so you can see we have our little space here and this is where it's gonna save the videos. We have tons of options here, but for the sake of this video real quick, what I'm gonna show you is we can go into edit video here and you can see we've got a little preview of our video that can play up at the top here. You can do quick adjustments here, such as saturation. You can see boosting up like so. Try to put that back at one. You can do things like sharpness and detail as well in here. But what I want to show off here at the bottom, you have amazing temporal noise, uh, denoise reduction. What's that going to do? Well, English, right? What is that going to do? Is it's going to measure the frames before and after each shot. And it's going to use that data to help get rid of your noise. You've got spatial noise reduction, which to me is just like normal noise reduction. And you've got chroma denoise as well. So super cool here. Take a look at this. We have our presets up here. You can do HEVC. And they have this thing called MC Raw Log, which is like their own format of log recording. Not only that, you've got HDR with HLG, and then you also have some ProRes down here as well. So let's take a look here at our video codec. We have tons of options here. Let's say you wanna go for ProRes, you can do that. Let's say you wanna go for Cineon Log just because you have a standard workflow that involves Cineon. So there you go, you've got that there as well. Come down here, you can choose your resolution, just like so, and you can even choose all of these different versions of ProRes down here. For example, I'm gonna select HQ because I'm crazy. Recording ProRes HQ from a phone is crazy. So the caveat here, it's not recording directly with the phone, it's just recording the raw video in this mode, but because I have the paid version here, it includes this wonderful encoder. Not only that, as a matter of fact, let me just show you how fast this can go. Let's do, but we do H265 here. Let's actually just do a preset. Let's do, let's do 10 bit 420 HEVC here. There we go. And we're just gonna use the maximum bit rate here, which is 480, by the way, kind of crazy. And we're gonna come down here, we're gonna hit render. And let's see, let's use this folder here, just like so. Look at that speed. We just hit 60. You just hit 60 FPS rendering that out. That was from raw video into the uh, preset that we just defined. So there we go. And then when you're done rendering, what you can do is you can just come in, you can delete that video and there it goes, it is gone. So you can store all of these video clips basically here inside of the app and then pick and pull what you want out of all of your videos there. And then our final thing here that we're gonna go over is direct log video. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna take that raw video recording and directly encode it into our settings up that we have here. So for example, I'm gonna do the easiest kind of setting that we have here just to show as an example here. We're gonna keep the bit rate pretty low at 75 right there because it can get pretty difficult. This is a, a newer feature that has come out recently. So depending on the video codec that we have up here, for example, let's just do ProRes. So you can see we have a couple different options here. We have Rec 2020, which is HDR. We have MC Raw Log for grading, and then we have Cineon for grading as well. We're gonna stick to ProRes Proxy here because I find that this is the only profile that my device can handle for direct encoding like this. But, so we've got that out of the way. We're gonna hit record right here. Like so, you can see our output FPS is jumping up towards 30 FPS right there. And you can see the size of our file right there, definitely not nearly as large as straight raw recording but this is using the device itself to directly encode. So there we go. Once we have that done, we can see we have our little preview up here. And since it is ProRes, my device will not play the video back. So let's just do another quick example here. Instead, let's do 10 bit and let's do, let's do HDR here. So we'll keep the rest of the settings the same like so. 
there we go, exactly same here. Again, you're gonna see that my device is a little shaky. No OIS for me on the main lens at the moment. But there we go for this one. You can see we don't have any drop frames so far. We're gonna finish that recording. And then there you go right here, we have this. We can open it up. And there you go, you've got HDR video from RAW straight out of the device. So for example, the X100 Pro here does not have HDR video recording in the native app. So that's a great option if you want to do HDR. All right, so the last thing that I want to show right here is one of my favorite ways that I found to use the app so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into raw video here. You can see we've got 30 FPS selected. And what we're going to do here is we're going to imagine that my little coffee bottle here is doing something incredible. And let's say I want to try and capture that. So instead of using our burst photo mode here, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go into raw video. And let's say our little bottle here, ooh, it's doing something crazy. I want to capture that. So let's say, there we go. It did it. It's done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come up to our manage video section. You can see our clip that we just recorded right here. Yes, my, my bottle is doing crazy things. What I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to come down and I'm going to go to edit photo. And what this is going to do is it's going to give me every single frame of that video that I just recorded. So 30 raw DNGs per second for this one. You can see we've got a ton. Let's say this frame right here, I selected this one at minus 7.6. We're going to stick with this one. Let's say this is the point in the video where this is exactly what I wanted to capture. This is the exact frame that I wanted. And you can see we've got a quick little video editor here. You can do things, some basic adjustments there. You've also got down here, you can just do auto or you could do flat as well for the JPEGs for this one. Or you can come down and you can see our settings here. You can save it as a JPEG, or in my case, I'm always saving as a DNG. And again, look at this. You've got your temporal noise reduction, which means that it's gonna use the frames in the video before and after the frame that you select to help with that noise, which is good, very good. And then simply, let's say these are the settings I want. I hit my download. And there we go, I just downloaded a raw DNG straight from the sensor from a raw video at 30 FPS. And here we go, I'm gonna have it open in Google Photos just like so, and then I can continue to take it into Lightroom or do it on mobile or not mobile, do it on the PC, whatever I wanna do with it. So there we go, that is my favorite way that I found to use the app so far, and that is a general overview of the app as well. So I do implore you to check out the free version. There is a free version that you can try as well. And like I mentioned, I'm gonna be doing tons of videos going more in depth with each of the sections that we went over today. And yeah, I can't believe that I didn't know about this app until now. It's been absolutely cranking out updates lately. The uh, basically single developer, he is a legend, the community is amazing. Uh, there is a Discord as well that you can join and uh, people will be more than happy to answer questions. This is not like a paid sponsorship or anything like that. I'm just absolutely in love with the app. It's crazy that this is even possible on a phone. We're talking about a little phone like this, raw video out of this. Absolutely crazy, but yes, like I said, do look out. I'm gonna be doing some more videos going more in depth and until then, Keep being awesome and I will see you guys in the next video.